Welcome to the Final Girls Podcast. I'm Anna Bogutska, co-founder of the Final Girls Collective and your podcast host. It is a great time to be a horror fan in the UK right now. Last week, we had Bodies, Bodies, Bodies and Crimes of the Future. And this week, we see the release of Hatching, the debut film by Finnish director Hannah Burkholm. I had the chance to speak to Hannah a couple of weeks ago, and what you're about to hear is our conversation. Now, for anyone who's not seen Hatching yet, um, it's screened at the Sundance Film Festival, screened at Sundance London as well, and has been seen a little bit, but it is out in cinemas around the UK from today. And I really recommend that if you're interested in sort of not jumpy scary horror but rather very creature based emotional horror films the premise of hatching is a teenage girl who is sort of put upon by her extremely um ott influencer mom into being the perfect image of a young teenage girl Uh, she finds an egg that she decides to hatch and what she hatches is not a baby bird. It's a giant baby bird that slowly starts to evolve into a sort of creepy doppelganger of herself. I'm not going to say anything else because it gets really weird and also a little bit sad, which is a good combination for a horror film, in my opinion. I love a sad horror. If you'd like to support The Final Girls while we're on hiatus before our next series of the podcast launches, you can do so uh, by just giving us a review or a follow on either Spotify Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. Really appreciate them and they help people find the show when we're not publishing new episodes as regularly. You can also support us over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash The Final Girls. There's in-depth reviews of new films that have been coming out including bodies 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 and crimes of the future you can also find me uh on twitter at anna be demented and i think with all of that said please enjoy my conversation with hannah burkholm so, hannah thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate you giving a little bit of your time up to chat to me Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to talk to you. (laughs) (laughs) So I wanted to ask you about the origin of this film. Um, Kind of when did it come to you? Was it uh, was it a particular scene? Was it a a particular character? Kind of where, where did hatching begin? Well, it began in 2014 when the screenwriter Ilya Rautsi and I, we contacted each other in this kind of directors and screenwriters speed meeting event where you can pitch your ideas. Mm -hmm. And then he told me that he has this one sentence in his mind, which is that a boy hatches a double ganger out of an egg. And that Mm -hmm. is all he knows. And I just thought that that is so new and interesting idea that I really want to be in part developing this but I want to change the lead character into a girl because I really need to see more stories of women Mm -hmm. and girls in films so that's what we did in the very beginning and then we started to develop the whole story from this one sentence so I I basically draw myself an egg and started to think that, okay, what does it mean? And if this girl is hatching an egg in Finnish language, hatching means also brooding. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, she's kind of trying to hide some of her emotions, maybe some sides of her character. And in hatching, there is a theme of motherhood and a theme Mm -hmm. of growing up. So all those themes really came up from uh, basically from an egg. (laughs) And can you can you talk a little bit about this impulse to change the gender of the protagonist from a boy into a girl? Why was that important to you? Well, it, it really was important because uh, I have seen many, many films, old classics, new films from all over the world in my life. But uh, I mean, 90% of them is about men or if there's a female protagonist. It's not really... Mm, it's usually written and directed by men and it, there's kind of man gaze mm-hmm, <laughs> towards mm-hmm. that female character. And I can't really feel that I can identify with those characters. So I really need to see more stories that 
tell about women and girls in a way that I could also relate to those stories. Mm-hmm. And and can we talk a little bit about Tinja in the in the film? Kind of how did she how did you develop her and draw that character? Because she's such she's such a little ball of nerves from the mm. very first moment we see her. Uh, yeah, we started to think about the main character and uh, and if uh, this character is kind of brooding and hiding some of her emotions mm. and some sides of her character. Then we came up with the idea that uh, this girl. 12 year old girl is all the time trying to kind of gain her mother's love by trying to please her in every way and uh, the mother uh, we made her to be this kind of influencer mm-hmm. vlogger mother who is very uh, determined to uh, kind of fulfill her own unfulfilled dreams by making her daughter a very successful gymnastic and and uh so the daughter is all the time trying to find ways to please her mother and she's all the time afraid that she would disappoint her mother and uh, and she's trying to hide all her negative emotions kind of so-called negative emotions like sorrow mm-hmm. or anger or uh so so uh, although she kind of any emotion neg- any emotion that basically is not considered to be perfect or exactly. um uh blockable I don't think that's a word but you know what <laughs> yes I mean. exactly uh, exactly yeah. and I, I found the mother to be a really interesting character this kind of very up until one moment in the film later on which we won't talk about kind of so perfect in a such a superficial way but in a way that we're very familiar with you know through Instagram and and blogs and vlogs and um even shows can it, can you talk a little bit about this vision or version of perfection that she's trying to get at even from the introductory video that she films of her family it's it's that video itself is almost scarier to me than the rest of the film <laughs> yeah i know exactly so um my idea was really to show the film's world as Mm -hmm. mother has kind of designed their life. So uh, she's constantly filming her family and uh, for vlogs of so-called wonderful everyday life. That is her oh lovely everyday life. That is her vlogs name. So, uh, so she has really decorated the entire house uh, in kind of lovely pastel colors, all colors are matching. There are no strong colors because mm-hmm. mother doesn't allow any strong emotions in the family. And uh, in the film, there are no dark shadows because she doesn't allow any dark secrets in the family. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of roses everywhere in the wallpapers and uh, here and there in the house. And also their clothes. Mother has picked all the family's clothes. They are all in matching colors. And mm-hmm. I really wanted to tell about this character who is maybe I think that she also is desperately trying to get people's love maybe love from her anonymous viewers Mm -hmm. by showing how lovely and perfect her life is and I think she's kind of person who um, maybe she feels kind of emptiness inside and tries to fulfill that with all Mm -hmm. the things that she considers to be perfect happiness Mm-hmm. and i find it really curious that you don't give her a name do you in the film she's just yes. called mother can you talk a little bit about about, yeah. about that choice yes and that was when we developed the story with mm-hmm. Ilya Rautzi, the screenwriter that was very important to us that both mother and father they don't have names because uh i wanted to tell this this what happens in the film in the from the perspective or of our lead character in the other mm. the main girl so uh she always feels that she can't really understand the dynamics in the family and uh, the relationship of her mother and father and uh, and so for her they are just mother and father just a little bit distant figures and that's why i also didn't want to give them names and also the actors didn't know any names for them they were in the rehearsals they were asking that should we have some names that we know we call each other and I said no no you're just mother and father and that's Mm -hmm. it (laughs) and and speaking of actors can you tell me a little bit about how you cast especially Tinjak how you found uh Siri to to play her oh yes she's wonderful we we auditioned uh 1200 girls all around Finland for this role because it's just uh, just uh, 
so challenging role mm. uh, because she's playing a double role actually in this. And film. also, she's so, almost in every frame of the film. It's always exactly, on her. exactly, exactly. She's in every scene and almost like you said in every shot. Mm. So, uh, so it, she's really the main thing in the film. So. And it's very, very challenging role for a girl of such a young age. So we found her through the audition and she had never acted anywhere before in any, I mean, not even in school plays or anywhere. And she was just a natural talent and so lovely girl. And uh, and she's not really a gymnast in real life. Huh. We had a stunt double for, for her, but she's uh, doing uh, figure ice skating. So she's mm-hmm. kind of flexible and uh, and mm. good in moving but not real gymnast and how did you work with her kind of as the film gets progressively more horrific especially as yeah. uh you know with as the doppelganger that hatches from the from the big egg grows in and becomes more human-like uh yes well first of all it was because this uh this is not a film for 12 year olds so it was important to me that that she feels safe all the time mm-hmm. and that she understands all the time that it's not her on mm-hmm. the screen she's just mm-hmm. and these are not real events we are just acting and so so I really we had long rehearsals with her and all the other actors and we really started everything with uh all of us just you know playing together and uh, all of us playing monsters and crawling on the floor including myself <laughs> screaming on the floor and and uh, and uh, we were baking together mm-hmm. and doing all those kind of things that we would she would feel at ease and she would feel that we are kind of family and she mm-hmm. would feel uh comfortable just showing her rage and uh, and screaming and crying and so on so so all those things I did with her, and then she also mm-hmm. had some body doubles. So with all those girls, well, we basically crawled on the floor and uh, finding ways to move and uh, and just kind of all those talent was already in them. For my job was just to let it out. Yeah. And uh, well. <laughs> and um, uh, did she actually see the film? I mean, I know it's not for twelve years, but has she seen? Yeah. Yes, she has seen it now because it, I mean it was filmed 2019, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the COVID came, and it took time to get it out. So mm-hmm. now she's already 15, <laughs> and she's kind of a young lady already. And now she has seen the film, mm-hmm. but uh, but she said that that on the set during filming the film, mm-hmm. it wasn't scary at all because mm-hmm. everything is so technical. There's no yeah. scary music or scary sounds. It's very technical, mm-hmm. and she said it was just fun and weird and <laughs> so on but now uh she has seen the film uh kind of like three times and but she says that she hasn't seen the, the entire film because they are moments when she all the every time closes her eyes because she said it's just so scary that she can't mm. watch it with all the sounds and everything that's so sweet <laughs> yeah. and and I kind of wanted to ask you about the whole doppelganger thing kind of can yeah. you um were you and the screenwriter kind of inspired or wanting to move away from some of the stories of doppelgangers because it's such a it's such a fixture of horror fiction and films to have like this yeah. evil evil twin that is actually you know mm-hmm. representing the things that you don't allow yourself to do or to think or to feel Yes, well, for us, it was very important that uh, that this doppelganger is not just evil. It mm. was important for us that uh, we don't tell about good girl and evil girl, uh, in a sense, but it, it, the doppelganger kind of uh, represents all her so-called negative emotions, but actually sorrow mm. or, or wanting to be loved or, or being imperfect. I mean, this creature is totally imperfect. It's kind mm-hmm. of totally deformed. And yet it just wants to be loved. It acts in the wrong way and does wrong things, but yet it wants to be loved. And, and I think that is uh, human. So, so uh, even though it's a monster, but uh, so we really wanted to, this creature to be relatable and and also likable in some mm. way so it's not just evil and also what was important to us was that um uh, since you can also see this as a growing up story and mm-hmm. the girl is in the age when she's kind of slowly mm-hmm. reaching puberty but this film's horror doesn't begin with her you know 
reaching puberty and having her first period. So the horror is not like, oh my God, I'm becoming a woman and it's so terrifying. It's it's not about that. Uh, she just happens to be in that age, but her horrors really comes from her, mm. her relationship with her mother and I would say with her parents in general. And can you talk a little bit about the design of the creature and kind of how that changes throughout the film? Yes, we uh, we designed the look of the creature in mm. Finland with two wonderful concept artists, Petteri Mäkinen and Emilia Lindholm. So uh, I was describing to them how I want the creature to look like, mm. and uh, what I, I was sh- I showed them some reference images of uh, anorectically thin girl bodies because okay. in this film there is a subtle theme. There of, is, uh, yeah, disorder, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and and I was explaining that I want this creature to be kind of totally disgusting and totally deformed in every way so it's so disgusting and no one could ever love it except that that maybe someone does so uh and I I was kind of explaining that it's like a kind of smelly teenager that it's raging to its parents and at the same time just wants to be cuddled so Mm -hmm. and uh, and then we were kind of uh, designing how it evolves and uh, they were drawing some concept drawings of it and some uh uh, 3D pictures of it and then I really knew that I want to make this creature uh, when it first hatches as an animatronic puppet not mm-hmm. the CG character mm-hmm. kind of like E.T. Mm-hmm. Yes. animatronic puppet so it, it's kind of a puppet whose um, facial expressions and fingers move with remote controls and then mm-hmm. you move the body with rods and so because I really wanted this creature to have a physical presence so then I knew that I need the best possible person to make this puppet. So I Googled that who is the best animatronic designer in the world. And uh, Google told me that that is Gustav Hergen, who lives in London. And uh, he has been the lead animatronic designer in the latest Star Wars films and Jurassic World and Prometheus and so on. So I uh, emailed him and showed him the our concept images. And he got excited about our drawings and our Amazing. story. Yeah, so so he collected a wonderful team to make this puppet for us. And uh, uh, there were many people making this puppet and they were all so good. And in the shootings, we had five puppeteers moving the puppet mm. with uh, moving the facial expressions with remote controls and moving the body with rods. And all those puppeteers, they were so nice. They were also from uh, UK and uh, Ireland as well. So... And uh, I mean, they were so nice. They had been working in all Star Wars films and here and there, and and uh, they were so professional. And that's amazing. With. That's yeah. really incredible. Google does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> so it seems. <laughs> and um, I want I wanted to bring up the um, the thing you mentioned, which I also picked up on in the film when I was watching it. Kind of this very subtle kind of visual reminders, or not reminders, visual indicators of of eating disorders as well even from i think the very yeah. first shot of tinja is her back and kind of all the bones mm, and yeah. the vertebrae in her back showing yeah. and the way that she you know when she looks at the video of herself and her mother's bl- vlog there's you know she her face falls because she sees that her foot is not pointed the right way yeah um all the all the kind of you know the touching and the prodding and the positioning her mother does to her body mm-hmm. the way that she we don't really see her eat the way that she eats her little yogurt like a like a little bird as yeah. well um can you talk about it because it's a very it's a very sensitive subject of course and it, especially around yeah. girls that age and and i'm wondering kind of how did you approach uh showing that theme without ever making it too explicit and especially kind of not really putting your character or your actress through mimicking an eating disorder yeah yeah uh it was important for me then the screenwriter Ilya Rautzi to that there's a hint of eating disorder in the film but it's not the Mm. uh, we are not talking about it Mm -hmm. and so so it was very carefully planned how I placed it in in all those moments like you you are telling but basically in this uh, film uh, she's kind of uh, feeding her pet in a way mm-hmm. <laughs> in a certain way so so uh, and also for for Siri who was uh, acting this girl mm-hmm. since she was 12 years old so I didn't want to talk with her too much about you know 
uh, psychology of this film or eating disorders because it just I feel that uh, uh, that would be just too much to for a twelve year old. Mm -hmm. So so basically, what I was telling her is all those things that. Dinya knows in the film like well she knows that she's feeding her pet she knows that uh mm. so so that's uh what I was talking with her and not too much about mm -hmm. you know getting inside her head and thinking mm -hmm. about eating disorders and so on that's really good I I really I really like how subtle it was I think it's one of those things yeah. where if people know the signs they will see them and if they don't yeah. they it kind of passes them by it's just another thing in the film yeah um, and I, I don't want I don't want to talk about the ending because I want this to go out for people who haven't seen Hatching yeah. yet. But I do kind of want to ask you whether um, kind of how you I think how to frame this. How did you see the creature Ali and Tinja essentially coming together? I think in the without talking in in metaphors here they do come together yeah. in the end and become much more closer in how they react to things i think was that was that always the plan and did that basically was that always the plan for you and and your writer uh yes it, it was always a plan and uh and the very ending how the film ends was always already that that was always there mm -hmm. uh from the very script version many things changed uh, when we were writing it, but the ending was always there. Was, so we were mm -hmm. kind of writing to watch the mm -hmm. ending. So, uh, and yes, it was important for us to tell how these two sides of the girl uh, are Come kind together. of coming coming together. And and well, what I think about this film uh, and its story is that uh, well, you can't go through this kind of childhood that the girl had without having some scars mm -hmm. <laughs> in you but uh in the end it's important and hopefully you can stand up and say that this is me take it or leave it kind of like you have the strength to 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 kind of acknowledge all your feelings and uh, mm. and kind of also embrace it all sides of your character and I'm curious, as we're running out of time as well, you've show, you showed this film at Sundance, um, you've shown it in, in multiple festivals. I'm kind of curious, what has been the the audience reaction that has moved or surprised you the most? Uh, well, one uh, reaction that moved me a lot was a, a woman who stood up and said, uh, thank you for for making this film because she has had similar experiences as our lead girl kind of having eating disorder and being ex-gymnast and having mm -hmm. similar mother-daughter relationship and she uh, said thank you for making this film so real and authentic mm -hmm. and that was very important to me and very moving because well, there is monster. There, it's a hor there are horror elements. There are all weird mm -hmm. things happening, and still, I really wanted this film to be real, emotionally real. So that was very important comment to me. That's wonderful, um, Hannah. I, I know, I know, we're running out of time, so I just want to thank you for for chatting to me. And I think we've done very well in not spoiling the film because I really want people to see Hatching. Yeah, yeah, it was so nice to talk to you. <laughs>